Good evening everybody. I would like to do a demo of my tube amp, the Eggnator Tweaker, compared to my new Boss Katana. This is a Katana 50. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this comparison is because everybody talks online about uh, quality versus price and all that kind of stuff, and I've been a purveyor of low quality stuff for quite some time. However, uh, I do like uh, some things that are good value. Uh, I've went through a lot of amps, I've bought and traded a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, and I believe the gear that I have now is, for my means, uh, the best I could find. So, and, and I've been through a lot of stuff. Um, I've been through Vipers, Fender Mustangs, I've been through uh, all kinds of stuff, um, other tube amps and stuff, and uh, these I think are really good. Now the reason why I'm comparing these is because the Boss Katana is new. Uh, it's supposed to have better technology than we used to have in solid state amps, but the Eggnator Tweaker is a fairly proven uh, tube amp. Uh, it actually has uh, five tubes in it. Um, uh, six V6s or six L6s, I forget which one, um, and then 12 AX7s. Um, so um, it is a, a traditional tube amp uh, with a lot of different voicings and stuff like that. So um, it has some features. Uh, the reason why I, I think this comparison is interesting is because the Eggnator is a bare bones type of tube amp. Uh, there is different switches and stuff like that, but you don't get uh, headphone uh, outputs. You don't get um, uh, MP3 inputs and, and a lot of things like that, like uh, that you would have with uh, a lot of the practice amps uh, in this range. Now the Boss has a lot of bells and whistles. It doesn't have the full thing that you would get with a Mustang or with a Line 6 Spider, but you do get some pretty easy to dial in tones. Uh, it comes with a 12 inch speaker. Uh, how quality that speaker is, I don't know, but um, it, it does come with a 12 inch speaker which I think helps it a lot when you compare it to some of the 8 inch combos like the like the lower end Spiders, um, the lower end uh, PV Viper and that kind of stuff. Uh, you, I, I think it is a little bit better than that. Um, I haven't actually tried the lower end Vox stuff but I heard it's pretty good um, but you know I, I and, and you know I've had a Randall tube amp uh, with an 8 inch speaker and it really sucked. Um, you know, I, like I said, I think that the 12 inch speaker is better than the cheap 12 inch speaker is better than a cheap 8 inch speaker. So uh, we'll see how that pans out. Um, now I'm going to do my best I can do to make the volumes adequate or comparable to each other um, for the purpose of this demo. Um, the guitar that I'll be using is the uh, Epiphone uh, SG. Faded 400. That one's, I believe, uh, seven years old. Um, I have a couple of uh, Les Paul style guitars, but I think for this demo I'll try that just because it's new. Now, uh, as far as pedal goes, um, I have to use the Hall of Fame on the Eggnator because the Eggnator does not have a reverb. Like I said, it is kind of bare bones even though it has a lot of different voicings, so uh, that's kind of interesting. The um, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, the distortion side is, they say mimicked after a shred master, but I think it's actually, uh, sounds close to a DS1, but just a little bit less overdrive. Uh, the Swollen Pickle is, uh, your fuzz, muff style fuzz with a lot, a lo little bit more versatility than a fuzz, and that's pretty much what I'm going to be using on this demo. So, let me go ahead and get my camera in place here with my uh, in, ingenious uh, PVC uh, selfie stick holder that you may have seen earlier. So uh, I know that you may not be able to see all the dials, but you'll at least be able to see, um, hopefully, which amps I'm playing with at the time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off. Now, the way I have this set up is I have my uh, electroharmonic silencer with uh, two outputs to it, and I have it going to both amps. So what I can do is I, I don't have a switcher, but I can just turn the volume up and down on them. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the Boss Katana. And this is and this is all pretty much going to be on the uh, bridge pickup. 
just to make it simple. Now this is my clean tone with the boss and this is on the clean channel of the uh, katana. <laughs> Now that has the um, the gain is down on about 25%. Uh, there is no effects other than reverb on it right now. So um, and, and this here is on the 25 watt mode. Although I don't know that that's going to matter for YouTube purposes. So uh, my EQ my EQ is flat though across the board. <laughs> bass coming through even though uh, even though I'm using the the bridge pickup um, I think it has a little bit of bass response to it for that uh, cheap 12 inch speaker <laughs> okay so I'm going to turn that down and I'm going to turn the tweaker up now for the tweaker I have it set on modern uh, AC because I think AC is pretty well, let me go ahead and put it on USA. So uh, hopefully we'll get a little bit more Fender Fender sounds to it. Uh, it's on clean. Uh, gain is pretty much down. Uh, and bright and tight is uh, set to normal. So... mention now that the Eggnator cabinet there actually has a uh, the the stock speaker in it which is a Celestian Elite 50 um, it's kind of a, a, a copy of the uh, 30th anniversary but it uh, it's rated for 50 watts because you're supposed to be able to use this cab with the uh, tweaker 15 or the, te the tweaker 44 I think it is so, uh, so they made a one speaker to fit all that. So that's why, uh, that's why that is. But the reason why I'm mentioning that is because compared to the Boss Katana, now the Eggnator um, set up here, about 400 for the head, uh, 250 for the cab. So you're talking about $650. The uh, the Katana 50 is only 200 bucks. So. Um, basically, this whole amp um, by Boss is uh, less than the cost of that cabinet. So um, that kind of gives you an idea of what we're comparing here. So again, here's my clean. <laughs> Now, while I'm still on the Eggnator, um, let me go ahead and try a little bit of overdrive. Now, I, I have this overdrive from the Jekyll and Hyde setup so that this is a volume boost. I don't really have much drive set onto this, so... <laughs> the distortion now here is the fuzz the volume's a little bit low so let me turn this up a little bit Eggnator. 
um, clean. So now let me go ahead and... Uh, okay, so now I've got the boss turned up. Um, Okay, that's the clean there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try the volume boost. Now, the thing that they said about this amp is that they wanted to make it so that it took pedals well. So let's see how true that is. So here we go. volume boost overdrive. Here comes the distortion. Here comes the fuzz. Since we are using the Boss Katana, let me go ahead and show you. I have the booster uh, part set up so that it has a fuzz, a overdrive, and then a uh, um, and then a DS1. So, uh, so here now I've noticed with this amp it gets really touchy. Even just turning on the boost a little bit makes a big difference. So let me. So this here is the overdrive part. No, I'm sorry, that's actually the fuzz. Also kind of demonstrates the problem one of the problems with this amp is that since you don't have a display or anything you got to remember what you have set in each of these slots because you can program different effects in here so it's pretty versatile but you gotta you gotta remember what you got in there so now I'm going to go to this is the overdrive part <laughs> Here comes, this is the DS1. Okay, so there you have that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to really show all the effects and nobody really cares about three different kinds of reverb and all that kind of stuff. So um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show this amp um, with some of the uh, different settings. Now, also I've noticed with this amp, when you go from the clean to the crunch, uh, it actually has like a change in volume for some reason. So I'm going to go, I may have to tweak that a little bit. Let me turn down the volume of that a little bit. Okay, so here we've got the crunch, and I'm just going to run through these real quick because I'm not really going to tweak them a lot. Remember that the EQ is flat on all this, so you can change this a little bit. Actually going to turn the bass up a little bit on that because I don't know if you can hear it but I think uh, it benefits it's kind of weird the clean channel I think has a better spectrum uh, and takes pedals well compared to the other ones I think they might have added a little bit of top end on purpose uh, to make it cut through so they say 
So uh, I like to turn the bass up a little bit when I'm uh, at home. I think it, uh, it sounds a little bit better when you're not in a band setting. <laughs> So that's the crunch setting. Now here comes, this is the lead setting. sound that's supposedly from Waza DNA. <laughs> So that's Waza. Um, now also remember that you can change the gain setting on each of these channels too. So like if I go to the crunch setting, um, if I go to the crunch setting, which is like this. And I like that. I can turn the gain up too. Now, uh, in all fairness, here we go. Uh, we're gonna try the uh, Eggnator again. So here's my clean. Now, B, this being a proper tube amp, I think it sounds a little bit more warmer, a little bit more spankier. So um, I'm going to go ahead and change it to the AC setting, which is mimicking an AC30. Um, I think that where this amp really excels is when you turn the gain up um, on the clean mode, turning the gain up, I think, really is cool. when you uh, hold or sustain a note a little bit I think it's a little bit more smooth so it, it does attack a little bit different I think so um, there's that let me just go straight for the Brit setting and here's what the Brit setting is um, now remember that the only pedal I have engaged right now is the Hall Reverb uh, Hall of Fame so
that's still on the clean channel, remember. So I'm going to turn the gain down a little bit, flip it up to hot. And again, this one has a flat EQ as well, so... So this is what a hot Marshall is supposed to sound like. I don't know how accurate it is on this amp, but... Okay, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and max it out a little bit. I need to engage the uh, silencer a little bit here because it is getting pretty uh, uh, ruckus. So here we go here. To, uh, I can there's a tight switch so I can it takes a little bit of the bottom end out so it cleans it up a little bit That's pretty much the extent of how hot this amp gets. Probably not your uh, heavy metal amp. You'd, you'd probably get a 5150 if you wanted that, but it's, it's pretty versatile for what it is. So uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to turn the boss back up and let's see how dirty I can get it. Of course, we're going go to we're gonna go to brown. Uh, it's also interesting to note that the, uh, the boss katana has a built-in noise gate, supposedly. I don't know. I'm assuming it's not analog. I'm, I'm assuming it has something to do with processors and stuff and, uh, and cleaning it up uh, through uh, that method. So uh, you can actually go into the uh, Boss Tone Central and you can actually adjust how much that noise gate is set, like the threshold and, and the release and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it is kind of versatile. You just got to connect it to the computer and set it up the way you like it. Because once you set it up the way you like it, you basically have free reign to, to grab this amp and take it wherever you want because there's a lot in it. And the reason why I got it was because uh, this Eggnator is in my closet and I don't want to carry it all over the house because there's a lot of cables and stuff and plus I don't want to bump it around. Actually, speaking of that, the Eggnator looks really cool, I think. The uh, Tolex looks really nice. Um, they did a really good job on the corners and everything of this. Um, these look really, really good without any corners or anything on it. But I will say the Boss, uh, I actually thought this was plastic at first because when you touch it, it's pretty hard like plastic. But then I looked at the back and seen that it is wrapped. Um, I don't know, maybe it's wrapped in plastic, but it, it feels pretty durable. So you can actually, uh, it, it looks pretty tough. So, uh, so let's see how dirty I can get this amp.
I think that your takeaway um, from this is probably going to be the same as mine. And that is that I believe the Eggnator sounds better. Um, but, it, you know, for, for just jamming, if you don't use a lot of pedals or, well, I mean, it does take pedals well. It has an effects loop and everything. The Boss Katana does not. But since it has built-in effects, I don't really know why you need a, an effects loop unless you wanted a volume boost or something in there. Um, but the, the Eggnator is best, I think, if you want to sit down, you want to record in a studio, you want to use a mic, you want to, uh, to do uh, really cool basic stuff. But if you want to be portable and just take all the sounds uh, with you that you want, maybe play at a little crafts fair or something, uh, something where you're not really going to... And, and I mean, these are supposed to be designed uh, to get higher volume than a lot of the old modelers did um, and be a little bit more like a 50-watt uh, like amp, um, but a 50-watt tube amp, that is. But I, I think it really still isn't nearly as powerful. I mean, if I take this Eggnator and I crank it up, I mean, it, it, it it's pretty serious, even though it's only 15 watts. The Boss is 50 watts, and uh, I actually had it on the 25 uh, watt setting for today's demo. But um, I don't think it gets quite as loud, but it, it's kind of cool that you, it does have the built-in attenuating function, so you can uh, play it really, really quiet and, and not bother anybody. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, no, I still have this on the... Um, I still have this on the uh, Insane Metal mode, I think. But... But on the 0.5 watt mode, uh, you're not going to bother anybody. So, um, like I said, it's pretty cool. Um, a couple of other things I will mention in, since I just got this new is that I think both of these are, are pretty high quality. Like I said, of course, I like the looks of the Eggnator better. But um, but it, this actually isn't bad. I mean, when you compare it to some of the other amps in this $200 range, I mean, like the, uh, the parts where this connect is, you know... Uh, this this handles really nice feeling uh rubber um feels pretty pretty sturdy uh all of the hardware and stuff on it is uh i think pretty decent uh for this price range like i said uh this does have two savable uh channels um the 100 watt version has four channels that you can save and you can go on the computer and edit a bunch of stuff and save it if you want you could save it on the panel uh, I've actually been using this in panel mode. So, um, what I did was I put on channel one, I put like a. Uh, more of a, I guess, a Pink Floyd type of uh, sound. And then on channel two. Also interesting to note, like I said, the Eggnator's no frills. It does not have a foot switch, and you cannot add a foot switch unless you mod it. But the Boss does, uh, the 50 watt takes a regular uh, foot switch, just the one button kind. I think it's an FS5 that they call it, uh, their actual official Boss one. Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's latching or if it's just um, uh, momentary, but the uh, they do make the 100 watt version has a, a really step up kind of pedal uh, where it actually has uh, where you can go up you can go between the four presets and to the panel mode and stuff and you can you can do different things with it so uh, i think that's pretty cool um but i i gotta tell you i think that the price difference which i think was around 150 bucks between the 50 and the 100 watt one I didn't really think the 100 watt one had enough features to really make the difference. I mean, the speaker is the same size. Uh, most of the, eff the effects and everything are the same. There is a um, presence control on the 100 watt version, but you can actually control the presence on the software, um, even on the 50 watt version. So 
uh, you can set that. Um, so, uh, but anyways, uh, I hope you got something out of this, uh, even though there's probably too much talking and my playing is really sucks. Uh, my guitar is probably out of tune. Uh, it's a cheap Epiphone. Although, um, like I said, I purposely did it. I actually, I really like this Epiphone uh, compared to some other guitars. It has the, uh, this uh, Epiphone G400 uh, Faded actually has the stock uh, Alnico Classic pickups in it. And I, I don't think I'm going to switch them out because it actually sounds pretty good. And, and this is even considering that I have an Agile um, AL uh, 3000 uh, mahogany set neck with uh, Seymour Duncan Black Winners in it. And I also have an Agile um, set neck Korean built uh, mahogany guitar with a uh, Tone Rider Alnico Classic uh, 4. It's like a PAF style but with Alnico 4 magnets in it. Um, and uh, even so, I, I think this Epiphone uh, holds its own. So, uh, anyways, like I said, I hope you uh, got something out of this, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave me a comment. Thank you very much.